I used to ask Patrick Knight to go in five, <laughs> four. You just missed it. He did it. Oh. <laughs> and then the last three are silent, and then you, right? So we are back and live here at the Cook County Board of Commissioners, and um, we are moving forward to item nine, Budget and Facilities Advisory Committee Report. And I'll give Administrator Yorkie an opportunity to just introduce the topic, and then um, there are a number of us that will be sharing in the discussion. Thank you, Madam Chair. So um, over a period of some months, um, we've had a subcommittee of our budget advisory, actually budget and facilities advisory committee, um, that has been looking at the issue of discretionary funding. So in the past, the county um, has budgeted to fund various community organizations. Um, these are, you know, cultural, uh, culturally focused groups, um, other, other not-for-profit entities in the county. And there's been question about what the process should be for considering requests like that. And in the past, it's, there really hasn't been a structured process. So community groups just kind of come to the board and say, hey, could we have X number of dollars to, to do this project? And those have been considered on a case-by-case -case basis, but we haven't really had like a, a well-defined process for how those uh, requests get considered. So um, a, a subgroup um, consisting of Liz Wagner, who's here with us today. Liz, thanks for being here. Uh, Randy Knudsen is here as well. And Commissioner Sullivan have been working to, um, to look at the process and try to come up with some standards that we would use, a scoring system and a process for actually soliciting uh, responses, not, not unlike the one that Public Health and Human Services has used um, to consider health and social service type requests. So um, that's, that's the topic of the discussion today. And uh, what is on the agenda is a, uh, a scoring uh, matrix and also an application um, that the group has come up with um, to, to consider these requests. Part of it is also uh, having a policy for how we determine like the level of funding um, to, to be made available. And we have not completed the, the process of that development. And, and to be candid, there's not complete agreement on if or how we should do that. So um, that is still pending. But the, the idea behind having this on the agenda today is so that um, we can begin the process of soliciting requests so that those are uh, available to be considered as part of the FY24 budget planning process. Uh, in the meantime, the, the subcommittee would be working to uh, finalize uh, a policy that would then come before the board for approval. So at this point, there is no money on the table absent uh, the completion of that, pro that policy. And so that's, that's a separate step that we'll have to take. But the idea today is to make the, the application and the uh, scoring criteria to, to get agreement on that so that we can move forward with, with solicitation. And I'll stop there and turn it over to the chair. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for this conversation. Um, in fact, we have worked for many months, as Liz knows, and Hillary Freeman also sat on that subcommittee um, with us. Um, we began our work back in October, and the work initiated from conversation at the Budget and Facilities Advisory Committee with concerns about how the county board has um, made decisions about requests for discretionary funding, that there wasn't a common form, that some people submitted a letter, some people submitted a budget, some people just came and or organizations came and spoke to us but there was nothing consistent. And so we actually had uh, Grace Grenager come and speak with our subcommittee to talk about the process that Public Health and Human Services had gone through to create better de definition and provide kind of the guardrails for this process, <coughs> if you will. Um, one thing that was important to the Budget and Facilities Advisory Committee and our sub subcommittee spent a lot of time talking about is the need for transparency for the public and also the opportunity to have some type of fair system in place. Not just people coming forward and us approving things at random, but having a process and having something that is measurable when we are looking at these. And so we, um, after having Grace come and speak to our group, worked on a template um, which you see before us which is 
um, the scoring sheet and also on an application. We made sure that they were very similar or parallel to what PHHS is and also talked about how to put that on the website in a fashion that they could be accessed in the same way that PHHS applications are accessed. Um, this allows us the opportunity to create a summary um, in the application, which I'm sure all of you have read. It asks for, in two to three sentences, talk about your project. We're going to put that on the website so that our public knows what are the goals of each of these. And lastly, part of this process is giving a report to the board. Um, coming before the board, like recently the Committee of the Whole had the Cook County Historical Society come forward. They shared their budget, what their goals what were, what they were working on, and we thought that was an excellent example, um, an excellent model. Um, I guess I'd like to, to have Liz kind of jump in and talk a little bit about her experience with the subcommittee and these particular forms, because we did a lot of work actually online together during Zoom meetings, making changes to the form as we talked. So um, Liz, I'll turn it over to you. Well, as far as the forms, um, there was uh, trying to go back into uh, the history and uh, find what has been going on <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, uh, some of the material that I found was very helpful. Um, it actually had a lot more detail to it than what we uh, put into our form. Um, some of the things that I feel are uh, very important is uh, where is funding coming from uh, to these organizations uh, from outside the county um, you know are they a repeat asker are they is the organization not coming up with uh, any um, attempt to get funding elsewhere is it just are they just figuring on the county as being a handout to them um, so those were very important for me um, and also knowing what the uh, and we do have this on our form is is knowing what their uh, 990s show um, and um, I think those are some of the most important things for me I would agree I think the the fact is Liz said that we're asking for a lot of financial information we're asking for a budget um, all kinds of information that in the past was not requested and um, there's an <coughs> expectation that any organization that is coming forward um, to apply for that funding has a complete application and that it's in on time. In the past we've had organizations run in at the last minute and make requests and that does not align well with the budget process and the <coughs> timeline that we've set forward. Um, so that was important to us as well. Um, Randy, anything you would like to add? Boy, a lot's been said. Um, for me, it's all about transparency and consistency. And I think that's been said by just about everybody who's spoken so far. Uh, I wasn't on the subcommittee, but I do appreciate Liz and Hillary and, and Chair Sullivan, all your time on that. Um, I was kind of brought in at some point besides budget advisory, but for Parks and Trails, because we did have a, a request uh, in this past year that kind of made us think we need something a little bit more transparent, consistent, and a, a methodology to kind of look at, at different requests. Um, so we're very interested in, in all of this information as well and the grading structure. And I think it's just nice to have it nice and consistent throughout the whole county. Um, so that's really about all I have to say. I just like the consistent, consistency and transparency. Uh, the Budget Advisory and Facilities Group has really done a lot to try and uh, push forward policies, fiscal policies or general policies for the county and I think that's kind of been a good niche uh, for that group to kind of hopefully help out the county commissioners and, and the taxpayers. Thank that's you. That's all I have. Auditor Powers, anything you would like to share? Because I know we consulted with you regularly about the history of discretionary funding. Yeah, so, well, I guess I'd say there's, you know, there's been a few attempts at this since I've been here and there have been policies and practices um, but it's the con I think the consistency hopefully will be the change this time and something that everybody agrees on so that it will be consistent uh, we had 
as Liz talked about, there was a form some years ago that was uh, really challenging, long. Um, I think it was challenging for people, and it probably wasn't meant for the smaller organizations that we deal with, probably larger nonprofits. But so we tried, we tried to implement that, and uh, so and it dropped by the wayside again. It was difficult. So. I think this process hopefully will be something that's not only comprehensive but realistic in size and scope and consistent and continue. Survive all of us <laughs> and continue on. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Storley. Thank you. <clears throat> because I don't throw paperwork away, I go back to 2014 when we started talking about this. Mm -hmm. Well, when I came on in 2015. It was really limited, you know, we talked about the history, the service, the area, years, and that type of thing. <coughs> Not even half a page in their application. <coughs> the application then further on in 2017 became a little more detailed as to what your organization was all about, but I can remember working with Brady and we had three or four um, requests every year, sounds good. Give us your report on your budget. Where do you get your money? So, you know, it was limited. And we haven't done anything since 2018. So it's good to review all of this. The one thing I would say that I was always aware of, and I think we should be, that it is spread around the county, that it isn't just an organization in Grand Marais, that it isn't just <coughs> either and or whatever. But we try to uh, spread out the, uh, the money so that people feel that it is shared by uh, all parts of the county. So I would suggest that we look at that too. And that may be something for consideration, not only um, as the county board is evaluating um, applications, but also as we look at our policy. Mm -hmm. And um, there are lots of different things that we can include in that policy that will be um, many, many more discussions, I know, from our budget and facilities advisory group. But I feel good about where we've landed with our application and scoring again to create some consistency and accountability as well. Other questions or comments? Commissioner Hawkins. Um, well, I just want to mention at our last budget advisory committee meeting, well, maybe I need some clarification first because we're being asked today to accept or approve this scoring matrix. Mm -hmm. Certainly agree we should have a scoring matrix. I appreciate the work that's been put into that. It's kind of necessary. But I don't remember us as a board approving the public health and human services scoring matrix. We were informed. We all said, yeah, that's a good idea. But we didn't take an official vote on that, that I remember. So I'm curious why there's a standard for this group and are we applying this to the entire organization or just general fund use or and that's what i came across or felt left the last budget advisory committee meeting there's still lots of questions that need to be determined yes this is a good step we're making progress but are we going to have a dollar amount cap are we going to have a percentage amount cap is it going to apply to the overall levy? Is it going to apply to general fund and public health fund? All those things are really big mm -hmm. questions. That's why the policy and, isn't done. <laughs> right. And so sending out, hey, we have a matrix apply when we haven't even come to agreement, even a little bit yet, <laughs> of those questions, it kind of feels like we're putting the cart before the horse. Do I, do I think this is, we're on the right path? Yeah. But I don't understand why we need to take a vote on this today. We can accept it. We can say, hey, good work, budget advisory. Good tool. Yeah, now tell us how to use it. I, I, I'm looking for clarification, because we didn't do it with the, the other group. OK, and I can, uh, Commissioner Sterling. I'm trying to remember on that. It seemed, and I don't know, Brady, if you can remember, it's the former administrator brought it to uh, the budget meeting and then to um, Public Health <coughs> Human Services. And then I think it was more of a mutual agreement. I don't remember that we voted 
to do it. I think it was an agreement. Yeah. Too long ago. Too long ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Yeah, I know it was before we were all on the board. So does that mean then that they still will do their social end of discretionary and we will do other ends of it? That's, that is what I am anticipating, yes. And that's what our discussion was. And that's where I think at the budget advisory we discussed the appropriateness of public health and human services. They went, their uh, discretionary funding was, I think it was 9% of their overall budget. Mm -hmm. Is it fair that they just get to do that? I'm not saying it's bad, okay? <laughs> Clarify, it's not. <laughs> but how do we decide what is the appropriate amount to give out in discretionary funding by departments? And are we going to say, Highway Department, you get a, your own discretionary funding? That's a different fund we have. I just think there's more questions we have to make sure we mm -hmm. talk about, nail down in a policy before we say, hey, we're, we have money available for you. I don't know. Where's your mouse? Um, um, so this is something that we asked for as a board. And I really appreciate the efforts. Policy work is not easy. And you might say it's painful. Um, if we don't do this, if we don't approve the matrix and the application, we'll be getting requests for discretionary funding regardless. And we won't have any uh, consistent way to measure those requests. Even if we don't have a policy. Can, can I speak to that? Because I was under the impression this was a tool that was going to be used by the Budget and Facilities Advisory Committee. That they would be taking the requests that come through and, they and advising us using this tool. We weren't going to be doing the tool. Okay. It's, we, it's the royal, they were using the, royal the tool. We. The, the, and so, the royal we. The, yeah. So I see the tool, the fact that we're going to say, yep, you got to use that tool budget advisory is kind of a micromanaging. <clears throat> the Parks and Trails is getting their own, they're coming up with their own. Are they going to come to us and say, is it okay if we use this tool? Did public health come to us and say, is it okay if we use this tool? They informed us. We said, hey, good idea. But the, I'm just looking for consistency and process for all the groups that are using tools, mm -hmm. the same tools. Yeah. So I think we're all trying to do here. I think we're all trying to do the same thing. I think the policy will look at the broader picture, all of the different departments. I think this tool is to deal, as Commissioner Mills mentioned, with what's going to come forward to us this year so that we don't look like we're just making decisions willy-nilly, that we have a measured way of approaching it. And again, the Budget Advisory Committee would make recommendations. Ultimately, this board, whether it's PHHS or whether it's, um, you know, um, the Grand Marais Art Colony, whatever requests might come in, ultimately we are going to approve or not approve those requests. Yeah. Yes, Commissioner. So Stewart. in the discussion of requests coming in, we really have not had anything until 2019, a con small consideration and nothing that I'm aware of since COVID. This is the first time that I'm aware that we would get some ask on this. Is that right? It hasn't gone out to the public. We're accepting your... Um, and, and this funding. wouldn't be a, a big announcement to the public. Right. It would be just like it's been in the past. Or if we look at the PHHS model, it's posted on the website. We're right. not out advertising to the community. And I, I think there has been some requests that have come forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And that's what prompted this discussion. So there have been, and there, and there will be, and it's just nice to have this tool. <coughs> and there's, I am very open to amending it, and, and certainly there's a lot more discussion that needs to happen with, with, uh, with the policy. But I would much rather have something and try to work that into our consistency and our operations than nothing. Um, and, and this is a step in the right direction. So... Uh, I don't think it's over by any means, but I, I, I think it's, it's valuable right now uh, as we get into the budget season. So we have something to measure, uh, gather, and, and, and try to evaluate as best we can, even if we don't have the policy. Commissioner White. We could put a freeze on any of this distribution of 
these funds funds cross the board until such time absolute freeze and what percentage of our overall to all the department budget goes to nonprofits in the community it's like 200 percent that's a joke <laughs> <laughs> brady i saw the look on your face <laughs> <laughs> he just blinked he just blinked a couple times <laughs> i knew there would be more discussion yeah explanation <laughs> So I'm just, I mean, is that the role of taxpayers? I mean, I, I don't know for sure. Well, I mean, these are nonprofits who sh need to, and, and I like the idea of go, they need to get their dollars from other funding sources mm -hmm. to be always active on doing that. And um, so I think, um, I mean, if, if we really don't feel that, we sh that money should be distributed before there's a general overall policy, when do we start? I mean, because uh, Public Health and Human Services, they have distribu distributed or awarded dollars to different organizations already this year. Mm -mm. We're- That was from last year. Oh, last, so do we wait? I mean, it's just, a, I don't have the answer for that. So, but these, some of these organizations depend heavily on money coming from the county and and so does this, I mean, does the rubric then say, well, what is the value do we, what's the value of this nonprofit to the general public? Does it really, what is the population that it serves or that, or how many or how, I mean, like it's. And that's precisely what the questions on the, the yeah, scoring sheet get to, you know, do we provide equitable access? Um, does it address an unmet need in our community? Do you get funding from other sources? How will the funds be used? What will be the impact of the funding? Precisely your and then questions this, are addressed. This subcommittee would make the recommendations, so we do not get, have to micromanage and say, wait a minute, I don't like the color of socks you all wear. <laughs> and so I don't think this, you know, you, you guys are not worthy of county dollars. So it would, the recommendations would be like rubber stamping. Assuming that this, <clears throat> trusting that the people on the subcommittee have done their due diligence. Yes? Well, and used and had tools to evaluate. Yes. Yeah, them. oh yeah. no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They yeah. had a standard of. Mm -hmm. right. Other questions, mm -hmm. comments? Yes. Um, the form that you um, provided for us, is this the draft as it says that it will look like this? Yes, it's a draft because it's not approved yet. Yeah, yeah, right. I was just looking at the funding request that we had before. Mm -hmm. It just seems like it's easier because you provide boxes and lines, and then it goes into, you know, the narrative, into budget information, and finally with um, any kind of evaluation. Or and I can tell you, we we you looked at that, looked at it, and got away from it because we wanted to have it look like public health. So we're trying to create mm -hmm. a standard so that public health has something, we have something, Parks and Trails has something, but they're all very similar. So the people will have to do a lot of extra writing, on typing, this. typing, <laughs> we hope, <laughs> filling in the blanks. Right. Okay. Yeah, but we did feel it's important to get more financial information, mm -hmm. um, more information about their goals, their funding structure, who the um, work is targeted towards, all those types of things. Other questions, comments? Not I'd entertain a motion. Well, I have another comment. Again, just want to thank, thank you for the work. That's not easy to sift through and make, the, oh, wow. <laughs> Team effort, but regardless, it's it's important to try to build this into something that's not willy nilly and to get more more structure. Thank you. And I will say other counties are looking at our county for what we're putting together. When I first started to reach out to other counties um, through AMC and just networking at some of our conferences, most boards, all boards I spoke to, in fact said, well, we don't have a tool. We don't measure anything. We just kind of give to the same people over and over. And I, it, if you create something, we'd love to have a copy. Mm -hmm. So um, I imagine this would be something we might be sharing. Or selling. 
<laughs> that was my thought. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> there's an idea. <laughs> Revenue stream. Come on. There you go. Um, I, I was just going to say I failed to acknowledge the contribution of Hillary Freeman, who is actually the other member of that uh, of the uh, subcommittee that put this information together. And I wrongly gave credit to Randy. Um, so don't don't think that Randy had anything to do with it. Oh, I never did. Never. He's a big slacker. So, oh, Madam Chair. So I have a question. What are we voting on that we would? Um, vote on this particular matrix right now and the letter form that would go and the application Correct. application Okay, Commissioner Hawkins S I am wondering so We officially accept this scoring matrix and application They've used it. They don't they say you know what it should be tweaked. It's not exactly right We've we've discovered these issues. Do they have to come back to this board to get approval? I would, think, I would think so. I would think and so. And that's, this is where I think we're micromanaging. We need to, we can be informed. We, we can say, yeah, we think that's a good idea. Here's our input on that. But we let them take those little things and come back and then come back to us and say, hey, this is how it worked. We, we're, we think next, next time we might change it this way and we can all give our input. But this is where I think as board policy, when we have a policy, maybe that can be in there. But for right now, I just see this as another step we're making them go through. And so I'm wondering, when the Parks and Trails Commission comes up with their funding policy, is, are we expecting them to come before this board and for us to approve? Policy that, has to be approved by the board. That matrix, not, the, not their policy. The it's matrix. A, it's a healthy discussion. I think it's good for the board to be informed in the processes of our advisory uh, committees. It's 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 good to have that full circle and that awareness. And if we're going to be making, if we're going to be dishing out dollars or making decisions, uh, we want to be as informed as we can be. And um, it's a it's a collaboration, right? It's not that we're telling them to make tweaks. It, it would be just like uh, if you see something, bring it forward, and, and we can talk about it. You know, it's. It is a burden, but that's you know our burden as as a, for accountability and transparency. I think good process. Then I'd be interested in knowing when we voted at the public health and human services matrix because I don't. I well, we weren't for, commissioners. I didn't. Then, yeah. Yeah. No, we we were. It was brought to us. Um, I don't remember a vote. I remember us talking about it. I just want to make sure we're consistent uh, across departments. We're tr treating every department the same. Yeah, maybe we should get public health <coughs> and human services to bring it to the board for us to vote on. Uh, you know, I, I think the important thing, if I could, Madam mm -hmm. Chair, um, I first of all, I really appreciate this <laughs> discussion, and I think the main point is is that we want to have this conversation in a public forum so that the public can hear what we've been thinking about and talking about. Um, because it is, it's an important issue. I mean, the, and there's not agreement even among the uh, members of the subcommittee about should we be giving dollars, uh, public dollars to, to nonprofits. Um, and, and there's a lot of conversation to have around that topic. Um, but, but the important thing is to, to have this discussion publicly so that folks, you know, residents know that we're looking at this and trying to come up with a way to, to address it in an open and fair way. Um, and I, again, I really appreciate the work of the subcommittee to, to bring this forward in terms of uh, the, whether the board should be uh, approving this or not. I mean, that's, I think that's really a board decision. Do you want, I mean, we're bringing it forward because we want to have this conversation publicly. Um, whether or not you feel a need to approve the form and the scoring matrix, um, I, th I think that's the board's call to make. Um, and I, I recall that when we did the, uh, when we were considering the uh, public health and human services um, discretionary funding form, there there was discussion in an open forum, and I, I don't think you guys did direct them to to you know come back for approval on that. So I I'm indifferent as to whether the board says we need to approve this or not. Yeah, I think it's a good a good point. Just if we approve this, then we should have approval for any and all of them. You know, that just makes sense. Commissioner well, White. and it's <coughs> these different advisory committees. They 
this is what they focus on and they're looking at all the different options and they're reviewing and they're doing the what ifs or what abouts and I think it's outside of this board's realm to uh, well micromanage to question that are you sure you guys know what you're doing <laughs> like well that's rather insulting I mean, I would just, I'm expecting that people that are part of an advisory board that the rest of the world doesn't even know what, what you're doing, um, that it's, it's, a, it's a public service, it's a civic um, give back to try to make it an equitable community. And this is what we see, so we have transparency, there's no nepotism, there's no, but for us to, I just think, yes, I agree with trust, but verify. But at some point, I have to trust that the people that are giving their time aren't getting kickbacks for, <clears throat> I don't know, really. I mean, this is, and so if they are putting together their energy and they are creating this and thinking about this, because putting together, together a rubric and an application, there are so many variables, I would like, I mean, I'm trusting that there has been a lot of effort and time put into creating this. And if, if we approve theirs, would it not be easier then if we have to approve every one of these applications? Well, then, then everybody has to have the same application in every department, the whole, everyone, you know? So uh, I don't, I'm not going to question what these, these you people have put together at this point in time because I agree that as you start to use a tool and it's like, yeah, you know, if we would have done this might have been a little better way, I, you know, I, I think I trust that they would have the, uh, the intelligence to say this, this isn't quite working and they would tweak it how it needed to be tweaked without creating an illusion. Well, we had to fill out a form like this and oh, well, we didn't have to do that. I mean, I don't, I, I want to believe it's not going to be like that. I mean, this is like, I'm just trusting on this one. Madam Chair. <laughs> thank Stone. you and thank you to the Budget Committee. Um, I really look upon this as information not something to vote on today because we're all having this discussion. Where do we go? What do we do? Look at the draft, put it online. I just feel it's information. I don't want to vote on it. <clears throat> May I ask a question? Um, if, if the board is not going to vote on it, which again, I, I have no strong feelings either way, um, does that mean that we could go ahead and, and start using the form? If the, if the Budget Advisory Committee agrees that it's ready for prime time and, and we can put it out for, for folks to submit requests. Um, I just want to be clear on kind of what, what your expectation is about that. I think if we can all agree that we can go ahead and al allow this tool to be used, we can post it if this group agrees and that way the committee can then make adjustments or tweaks from year to year as they see needed based on um, either what they see as they are um, scoring applications or as applications are coming in, or as we have engagements and conversation with them about what we see from our perspective. Commissioner Hawkins. So I think we can accept the matrix, send it back there. I don't know that it's ready to be posted since we have no clue how much money we have available yet. That still needs to be decided. Mm -hmm. um, is it appropriate <laughs> to send out and have, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 200. applications mm -hmm. for money and then say, oops, sorry, we have no money. Because <laughs> really, we don't know how much we have yet. It, I think, I, no, I think this is a good start. There's never any guarantee, right? If you right. submit a request, there's never any guarantee. And that, that is you're very be clear on the application. So, submission of um, an application does not guarantee any money. So, I think we have a budget advisory committee meeting today, this afternoon. I assumed it was on the, going to be on our agenda again. 
But I think we really need to decide, are we going with a cap? Are we going with a percentage? And I'm going to leave that up to the advice of the budget advisory committee <coughs> looking for their input. If they can't get consensus to make a recommendation to us, I think we hold off another year. Well, I don't think we even ask for it until we decide how much are we willing to put on the line for this. In the past, we have not ever indicated a cap, whether it be a dollar amount or a percentage. Now, we have gone the last time around, the policy was 4%. Am I correct? That was some years ago, 2017, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. And that included everything that was uh, now public health. Correct. And they're not the same organizations, but all of those types <coughs> of organizations, health related, <coughs> that then moved on to public health, were all included in that. And it might have been for one particular year mm -hmm. when all that was included. So, so if that stands, if we, we don't develop another policy, that still stands. I just want to clarify, it sure. wasn't, I don't think we had a policy, it was precedent. It would, I don't remember reading I'd have to a check. policy. There, yeah, I don't know if it was a policy, but I think it was approved by the right. board. Right, it's precedent, I mean, they, that's what, but that's different than having a policy saying we will give 4% or up to 4%. Yeah, 4%. up to. Yeah. When you say up to, you can still give zero. Hmm. Commissioner Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little confused just in, uh, it, it kind of seems like the logic here is because we didn't approve necessarily public health human services scoring matrix, we shouldn't approve this one. And, and I guess what I'm saying is I think it's a good idea for us to reach towards um, um, some consistency and to have policy and, and to have it um, brought to the board for us to decide so that when community members come forward and say, now how was that money decided? And it's like, well, the, we have an advisory committee and then they bring it to, to the board. And if they say, well, how does the advisory committee decide? It's good to have a form or a matrix to be able to share with people who, who want to to want to know that information. So it, it's just so, it seems, it's like bizarre world almost where where we wouldn't do this. Um, we can always retract it, we can always amend it, but we want things to be public. We want the process to be transparent. Um, as far as a cap or a percentage or whatever, I don't, I don't know, I, I think that's another conversation. I don't know why that precludes this conversation um, when we do have that conversation, though, I think I think having this application out there would be helpful because if we decide 4%, uh, 7%, or 200%, like I joked about before, um, <clears throat> those are arbitrary numbers. It's, it's really helpful to see what our community needs are, and we can partially gauge that with applications and requests, and it gives us some frame of reference. So it's like, whoa, these communities organizations are asking for this is this a real thing is this a real need we need to be aware of those just those conversations and, and really think critically about them so yeah. any way we can c gather more information about this and and have a, a system to evaluate it I think I think the better and again there's lots of work to be done still but um, and, and that was the thinking of the committee mm -hmm. and I, and I would thinking. say his just memory again that's where the number came from back in that year 2017 whenever that was that was very close to what we had given the year before and it mm. turned out to be about four percent so mm. we said okay that's that's the max we're not going to give any more than we've given out this year the allocations may change but that's the max I think that's how it came about thank you Commissioner White but with the looming million dollar pay raise shortfall that hadn't been budgeted for. Uh, can the county afford? I mean, you're saying, you know, these, these entities, community entities, uh, have a great need for more money. No, no, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, right. this, is, this is helpful for, to find that out. To find know? that out. Yeah. But who's funding then these community nonprofits but the taxpayers, ultimately? The taxpayers. And these are the, some of the very same people that have needs and do, not to pick on any entity, but yeah. like 
like the North House or the Art, Art, Art County, that's not countywide. I mean, it's available countywide, but not all county residents utilize, or even mm -hmm. the YMCA, mm -hmm. but all county residents, or not residents, uh, property owners pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So the decision as to how much money this <clears throat> we will allocate to give away to nonprofits is impacting every property owner mm -hmm. in this county. And that can't be forgotten because right. we just tell them, you know, we're just going to give a 200% to all these nonprofits that you never make use of because you're busy working mm -hmm. to stay here. One That's of the all. things in the, the form, and, and Liz can attest to that, we talked about making sure it was equitable, that it was accessible, that organizations that were submitting requests did give back to the broader community that it was not a request for an organization that could only tap into the one percenters living in Cook mm -hmm. County, but that it was accessible to all. That's a very important thing that we added in the application um, that's part of the scoring matrix because we felt that was really critical. Good point. Another Mission question. So, so if, we don't, if we don't take action on this today, how does that affect um, our budgeting process for this year we need to get this out if people are going to utilize it because um, the budget calendar is approved and we need to have this in people's hands so that if there are organizations that are submitting to us um, that they have this and can turn items in by the end of May oh okay I'll that's you, what I was wondering is yeah. that is that when we yeah. need? okay can I give you one example soil and water is waiting mm -hmm. for this um, they're, they're a governmental organization. We're allowed to fund them, so I mean, it's uh, but they're not a profit organization, so they fit under nonprofit, but they're of a different type than other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. They work with our departments very closely, planning and zoning, and others. Um, so that, that'll be part of your discussion. You know, what there may be different levels of we fund mm -hmm. in some of these and so they're sitting out there right now uh, for years and years they had a levy of 30 they're up to a $60,000 levy that just helps them apply for grants mm -hmm. to do all the work on you know wetland issues mm -hmm. etc and so they're they're under this process right now unless you exclude them and say well they're of a different type so that's part mm -hmm. of your discussion but right now they're waiting for what kind of an application do we need to fill out? How soon do we need to get it in? Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the reasons this is here today because mm -hmm. you have some like that. Mm -hmm. That it's not, you know, it's it's not arts organizations. It's not which are. It's not private nonprofits. It's, it's not private. All exclusive. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's not the one's good and one's bad, but it's just sure. they have pressing needs right mm -hmm. now. They need some kind of answer from well, us. So. Well, and so I, my, my question was, is like, yeah. what if we wait till next board meeting? Is that is that going to disrupt? The, I mean, I guess, yeah, the longer they have to wait. Yeah, okay. Um, they can get ready, you know, <laughs> as long as we give them, they want to know the timeline. Yeah. yeah. And maybe we extend the timeline if we don't get it done. But, anyway. but then that, you know, sets back our budgeting process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've worked really hard to set that budget calendar and to, to make decisions in a timely fashion. I personally think um, just approving the use of the form by the, the budget advisory committee, and they can tweak it if they need to, you know, but giving them the ability to utilize that tool will benefit us as a board and it will benefit the public for creating transparency and accountability. Mission part, part of the reason why I was asking my latest questions was about the timing of things is just because I, I'm hearing some significant concerns from commissioners about he, here and now and today um, and, and wanted to try to see if there were other options but it sounds like uh, it would be disruptive to not do it today um, so I'm making a motion to approve it all right so we have a motion to approve the scoring sheet and the application is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion? 
Commissioner. If uh, this is not approved today, what happens? We just quit handing out money. I, I, wrong wording, people. not to be offensive. <laughs> but we do not then disperse any funding until. No, it does not in, impact us dispersing so funding. We just, it means mm -hmm. that the requests will come in like they've always come mm -hmm. in, but they will all look different. There won't be a budget attached to some of them, um, and it will not address the, the, the concerns that the committee and the public has. So instead of using two hands, we can just use one hand to work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Commissioner Hawkins. Yeah, okay, if you want to make it official, I, I'll vote for this. I mean, I, we need a tool. Yes. We do I need agree, tool. we need a tool. I just want to go on the record. Let's make sure we're doing it the same way for every tool. We don't do it for some and not for others. A hammer is a hammer is a hammer. Okay. For every department, you mean? Well, any time we are oh. giving out taxpayer dollars, we have the exact same. You've got to do it this way then. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not amending my motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just clarification. So, so we have a motion and a second. Other discussion. Yeah. Commissioner Storley. Um, <clears throat> it's the principle of the thing. Um, I know you have to move forward. I would have appreciated, though, that this be just information and we discuss it. We've been doing this. Maybe the public will be doing this to, to postpone it till the next meeting. However, that's my statement. I will support <laughs> you, but I think in the future when we have things Budget-wise, uh, information first, and then act on it. I don't think we're pushing our budget that much. Like Brady said, we could maybe push it out till the first week of June or something. People understand that, but. And I do apologize. The This was on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole, where much of this discussion was supposed to take place. And as you know, last week, um, it was a very lengthy meeting, mm -hmm. and sure. we yeah. ended without the discussion. So. Mm -hmm. Commissioner. However. I mean, I agree we need to have a tool, but cart before the horse situation, it's the same thing. You take it back to a personal household and you need to buy something, but you don't have the funds this month, but we will next month. We just have to wait to get the new set of tires for the car or whatever it is you can make do and you just have to because you don't have a birthday until then and that's when grandma sends you a check that you'll spend on new tires and so what who, the community entities that re, and i'm sorry soil and water they do a lot of really good things but it's a month i'm assuming that this will but a month to think about it because to to have something brought before this board and now we have to make a decision now is not a good way to practice, not medicine, but whatever we're doing, you know, to, to, to function. I mean, we need to have the time to think about what is the ramifications and then to get feedback from the, from the public if anyone's listening about this at this point. But um, I, I just, I agree with uh, Administrator. <coughs> Sorely, sorely, Commissioner. <laughs> Ginny, over there in the end. Um, too much light in my eyes, it's called sunshine. Um, that, that, is, that is not the way this group should be practicing governing. It's just not a good Again, idea. Again, I apologize. It was on the committee of the whole meeting right. and it did not and, get addressed. Yeah. But I can also say I did not get one email from sending out the forms and from sending out the minutes from budget advisory from anyone. Okay. Commissioner Mills. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, this isn't policy. This is just gathering information to help people Correct. make better decisions and and, uh, and and we can change it and, and hopefully I, hopefully we will change it as, as time goes on here. So I don't I don't see it as uh, yeah, it's great to look at things three times or whatever before um, to keep things efficient for government. Um, it's just that uh, this is like, to use another like household analogy, this is kind of like saying, we're gonna be having vehicle costs coming up. Um, we, we know that, we don't know what they are, 
but we need to decide ahead of time which ones we're going to prioritize, but then having vehicle costs come in and, and or, or, at, or looking, getting a diagnostic of the vehicle, trying to assess what, what costs will be coming or what, what requests will be there. You know, it's just another tool, another, another way to look at it. Um, and, and it's, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not giving away any money with this, with this tool. This is just a tool to help us look at and evaluate what needs are out there, the requests that come in and how they fit with our values as a board and, and just uh, how, to, how to make better decisions. So I don't, I don't, I, I'm really confused why it's, um, and I don't, I don't like to operate with confusion, but I'm really confused why it's uh, a problem, why this is, why it's given heartburn, I guess. Maybe just timing, I guess, I don't know. So we have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Randy and Liz, thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate all the work you do on the committee and spending time with us today. And we'll see you this afternoon. <laughs> thank you. All right. Commissioner? <coughs> yes. And so just for going forward into the future, I will never again vote on anything unless there's been time to think about it. If it's brought to the board as a last minute emergency, then um, we'll have a special meeting. I don't, I don't know if commissioners have a special meeting to make a decision in two days or whatever it is. But Well, but the other decision, you know, and I will take responsibility, I could have not ended the meeting. <sighs> Um, last week and I did no. because there was another group that was meeting at 1 o'clock right. in this and, room and it was a very very good committee of the whole a lot of really good yeah. information and conversation and long but you know I mean and there was yes I understand the circumstances to that that coming forward and I really appreciate the efforts that this subcommittee has put into doing this because there are so many variables when you really think about it <laughs> But um, it, it's just not the way to do business. So we'll move on now to land services, and we want to thank Neva Maxwell for patiently waiting. I can still say this morning, it's not this <laughs> afternoon yet. <laughs> I don't know if it was better to go after the highway department's presentation or that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so the first item I have before you is a recommendation from the Planning Commission from their April, tw April 12th meeting to uh, approve a 10-year interim use permit for aggregate material extraction on five acres at 21 Pine Mountain Road. That property is a part of the Pine Mountain Trailer Court and it's owned by Ryan Thompson. Uh, Mr. Thompson would like to extract what he sees as primarily dirt material. Um, it's, a, it's a very small scoped uh, op operation and application compared to what we usually see. Um, and primarily that material will be used for landscaping and mound cover for septic systems, which up here is in very high demand. So um, there was a discussion from the neighbors. Um, the initial responses were opposition for the access route. Um, Mr. Thompson was going to use a shared easement through the neighbor's property through the north. Um, and then uh, we had some delays in processing that pushed the application back a month. So during that month, Mr. Thompson explored other access route options. And so he amended his application to have the new access route go almost totally through his property and then exit out at the Pine Mountain Road. So um, that really addressed most of the neighbor's concerns. The remaining concerns were just proximity next to a use like this. Um, the Planning Commission's approval was based on the scope, the small scope and size of the application, and they put 16 conditions in addition to that new access route to the application. Those 16 conditions were um, aimed to address the noise by hours of operation. Dust control was listed as a condition. Um, and let's see, what else is primarily important for you? Um, oh, there was some discussion 
about the snowmobile trail so there is a snowmobile trail that mr thompson allows to go through his properties on an old forestry road it is not a part of any formal snowmobile map trail um, it's just something that he lets people travel through his property to connect to the other snowmobile trail systems in the area so um, he told me that this new access road won't really impact that snowmobile route at all if you think about it these materials are going to be extracted during the summer months. Snowmobiling happens when you're not extracting materials. So I don't foresee any conflict in those uses there. Um, there were a couple of the neighbors that had opposition uh, to the application at the Mar April 12th meeting. And so the Planning Commission asked them what their thoughts were about the application after Mr. Thompson had amended that access route. And they said that that really did alleviate most of their concern. Um, and they were glad to hear that it was a relatively small scoped project. Um, lastly, this is the first interim use permit that has been before you this year, so I just wanted to highlight the difference. So an interim use permit is for a specific duration of time or until a specific event occurs. So in this case, the condition is um, for 10 years or upon transfer of ownership. So that is to say that another company can't purchase that property and then run the same operation. They would have to come forward. The permit doesn't transfer with the property, which is inherently different than a conditional use permit. Um, I think that's the majority of what I wanted. To, I guess last one last thing. Uh, these applications, when we look at aggregate material, like I highlighted earlier, they are where they are located. So that's why our zoning ordinance does allow these activities in any zone district. So this is compatible with its zoning district. Um, so that's why we look to the conditions to really try to mitigate impacts to neighbors. And I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I just would like to make a comment, having um, been at the, the meeting and really appreciate the fact that Mr. Thompson came back and addressed concerns of the neighbors. Um, the fact that he was willing to change that access road. The hours of the gravel pit are seven to five, Monday through Friday. Um, so he's really trying to make sure that they maintain a quiet, peaceful neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, both for individuals that access off Pine Mountain Road and also for those individuals who are living in the trailer court who access off of Devil Track Road. Um, my only question, um, I guess, to the board is um, there were concerns about, you know, noise and dust and kind of that, that quiet um, opportunity to, that you want to have at your home or your residence. And we could consider adding a condition if we wanted that the applicant would be responsible for addressing any concerns that came up related to noise or dust. Um, I don't think that's necessary because Mr. Thompson has done so much and gone out of his way um, but I thought I would bring that up based on a couple of the questions or concerns related to noise and um, dust. Commissioner Mills. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, I thought there was uh, a, a, some, there, uh, how do you address it? Conditions? Uh, the noise and dust. Um, so primarily it's just not in the conditions is that what the It's with water and calcium chloride is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I may, condition number nine says yeah, dust shall be managed by water or calcium chloride to mitigate potential negative impacts to nearby residential properties. And there really is only, you know, one location for the access road that goes close to the trailer court. Um, and then it's kind of going away from all the residential properties at that point. Otherwise, it would just be the main operation itself that might generate dust. Right, all right. So that is... So that's check. So that that's out, really right? that's really addressed there. Um. But I just have to say, in in all the time I've been on the planning commission, I've never seen somebody so responsive to their neighbors. Um, it was really nice to see. And I got another question, if I'm sure. Madam Chair, and that, it was uh, ten year, or what's the? Yeah, the recommendation is for 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, when Mr. Thompson first approached me with this project, uh, he wasn't aware of the interim use permit, so he just approached it as a conditional. And then he said that, that he estimated there was about 10 years worth of material to extract. So that's where I recommended to him that we process it as a 10 year interim, and he was amenable to that because mm -hmm. it does add a comfort level to everybody that it won't transfer with the property. 
So I, I also will agree with Commissioner Sullivan that um, when I meet with people on these applications, I kind of give them a laundry list of things to go forward with. I say contact the Soil and Water Conservation District to talk about your reclamation plan afterwards. Talk to Tia Parks so that you can talk about invasive species so that you're not a vector for transmitting tansy further throughout the county, and et cetera. So um, he did all of those things very quickly um, and has been very amenable to being a responsible steward. Absolutely. Commissioner Storley. Thank you. Well, I think it's fascinating and wonderful. He can get black soil uh, for <laughs> 10 years for <laughs> landscaping and septic system. It might be all gone if we approve <laughs> this um, immediately. <laughs> get his name. <laughs> Administrator, you're Yeah, <clears throat> Madam Chair, I, j I just have to ask, Neva, you said that uh, aggregate extraction and snowmobiling are not conflicting uses, but what happens if winter never ends? <laughs> <laughs> That's hitting a little close to home right now, Administrator, you're <laughs> I don't think I can get out of my driveway anymore. <laughs> <sighs> Any other questions? So yeah, I guess where I was going with that ten year, that seems like a, that seems like a good number, um, and there was comfort with that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Hawkins. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Commissioner White. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. On to the White Pine Investment Company. Yes, thank you. So the second item is a recommendation uh, that was unanimously recommended before the Planning Commission at, again, their April 12th meeting for a conditional use permit to allow Foresight Campground at Big Bear Lodge. Um, the new owners, Chris and Allison Short, purchased this resort last year. Um, and there is an area of land between the Northwoods Loop and the Gunflint Trail. It's kind of up on a little hump and so they'd like to have four campsite units up there it's already cleared out by the previous owners and there's electric there um, so we had one written comment uh, from the neighbor uh, closest to campsite four and he was opposed specifically to that campsite four because he's concerned that it's closer to his property um, the Planning Commission had four people in attendance between the March 8th public hearing and the April 12th meeting um, that were all in support of the application. They all felt that there was a lot of need for this kind of um, use in the area for visitors um, and that these owners had been particularly uh, responsive with kind of trying to bring that resort kind of up to speed with things. Um, the discussion at the Planning Commission meeting uh, involved discussion with some of the information that Mr. Short, the applicant, brought forward to them, and I did include it with your packets. Um, the applicant submitted a submittal in response to the neighbor's concerns. It looks like a map like this. Um, and essentially what it's showing is that there's other existing campfires at their resort that are closer to Mr. Butoh's property. Um, so they don't feel like that, plus like the, the angle of the wind movement, the prevailing winds usually, would more often than not blow smoke further away from his property. Um, the applicant also indicated there was vegetative buffers and it's not actually visible from these campsites to that neighbor's property. So <laughs> the applicant tried to demonstrate that they didn't really feel that these campsites were gonna have a negative impact to the neighbor. Um, additionally, so this application also had that one month delay, so the applicant had extra time to address some things pointed out in the staff narrative. And so I'd encourage them to reach out to the FireWise coordinator, uh, and so there was no response because there was no FireWise coordinator. Um, but in my perspective, any time that I see um, campsites for guests where there's no pressurized plumbing, I always prompt the discussion of what is the fire extinguishment plan for those visitors who are coming up from the cities with no perspective of what a fire should be when you're putting it out. Because um, a, a startling number of people don't actually <laughs> know the answer to that when they're guests. Um, so uh, Mr. Short and I, in lieu of no FireWise coordinator, come, came up with a plan, and so he proposed that to the Planning Commission, which would involve having some um, non-potable water up at the campsites, and then also a fire extinguisher um, with their fire extinguisher company, so that if do anything does get out, that they have another method to put it out. So. Um, he felt that that addressed those concerns. The other thing I had <coughs> highlighted in my staff narrative was outdoor lighting. 
so that we're not making a big spotlight scene up on this hilltop. And so the only lighting proposed is to be on the outhouse that will be there downcast. So the Planning Commission felt that that was all um, a good solution to potential, you know, feelings and considerations. And so they put uh, five conditions on the application. And the number five was a trailer size not to exceed 27 feet in length. There's a lot of discussion with the applicant on that to see if that was a good size. Um, and they felt that that was a pretty standard trailer size. They just didn't want it to be totally open-ended again because this permit does transfer with the property as a conditional use that we want to be clear that things that we agree upon should actually be codified in the conditions so um, they felt with all of those conditions that they were addressing the concerns and they recommended approval of that conditional use permit and I will say I really appreciated the attention to detail with um, the concerns about fire and, and mm -hmm. getting a fire extinguisher and buckets um, there's actually more protection against fire there than at many of our campsites and other places around the county. <laughs> um, so that was really, really um, thoughtful of White Pine. And one of the other things um, that I thought was great was the downcast lighting and mm -hmm. just listening to your neighbors and trying to work with them. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution for the conditional use permit. Um, for the for site campground at Big Bear Lodge. Thank you, Commissioner Mills. Is there support? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Hawkins. We have a motion and support. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. And the last item I have for you is a proposal to the zoning ordinance to amend it to make cervid farming a prohibited use in all zoning districts in Cook County. This is a follow-up to your committee of the whole meeting in January, um, which was prompted from my attendance to uh, my professional group, the Minnesota Association of Planning and Zoning Administrators, where we had a presentation from the DNR and kind of testimony from other counties that haven't gotten ahead of this issue and they've had some nightmares, frankly. Uh, so I felt uh, it was a good idea to bring this to you. Maybe we can be preventative about this as chronic wasting disease uh, is, is kind of vectored through cervid farming, so not its only way, but one of the ways. Um, and there is activity in the legislature on this issue. However, as we know with things in the legislature, it's best not to just wait for that to happen. So um, we did the public notice. This has been publicly noticed since like, February, I think, and uh, I got one comment, and he was supportive of this proposal. And I want to thank you, uh, Neva, for being proactive. That's the way we want government to work, mm -hmm. and um, really appreciate your efforts on this. It's been fun working with you on this. Um, we looked at it from a zoning ordinance. Um, we looked at it from you know a policy change. We we looked at it in a lot of different ways. And I'm just really appreciative of the work that she's done on this. Questions or comments? Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution for the zoning ordinance amendment for cervid farming prohibition. Thank you, Commissioner Mills. Is there support? Support? Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks for waiting. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our next item, Auditor Powers. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request for a revolving loan for the Lutzen Trailbreakers. It's a $51,000 loan request. It's It would be match for a grant that they're seeking, actually two grants for the Lutz and Trailbreakers for a bridge that washed out a year ago in the spring storms. And they could not reuse the bridge uh, during our rules, so they have to start over. It's about, it's roughly $400,000 is the estimate right now. And they've already secured um, or made the application for one grant this is the second one, a DNR trail improvement grant, and you've already approved a resolution regarding that in the consent agenda, um, since we're actually be the applicant on that one, or the, uh, we'll accept the application. So um, they've, all, they've secured a lot of matching funds 
with the town itself, with the organization itself, with other donations, but they're still coming up a little bit short. And this would be, it's potentially a short term. We'd ask for 10 years in case they do have to pay it all back. There's a potential that one of the grants could be um, used as the match for the other one. So there's a potential that it would be paid back early also. But, um, and we're helping to secure this in, in any event, uh, in any way that we can, because it's part of the uh, grant and aid trail system. Mm -hmm. And we have a responsibility under that uh, grant and aid to try to secure the access. And this is part of the access for that uh, trail system. This is actually a branch of it that goes down. It also benefits the business community because that's how they access um, also but uh, <coughs> so I guess that is the that's the request I'll uh, wait for questions all right questions from commissioners Commissioner Mills not a question but just for the context that Sharon came to the um, um, Parks and Trails Commission we've had numerous conversations about it um, and just uh, some um, Disappointment that there's there's uh, that this is on them, <laughs> uh, and it and um, it's just kind of messy. But I really applaud the hard work that they're doing and looking for ways to address this and just to demonstrate the importance of it and uh, and to basically go through every step or hoop that is needed to be done to make things happen. So um, it was it it it, uh, it was good. I think of very astute to to go through that whole process just uh, a demonstration of the value of the parks and trails commission and to to bring uh s citizens uh in into the into the governmental um sphere and try to navigate that um it's a it's a good tool there so <coughs> and as chair of the parks and trails randy does a lot um for for that whole effort so other questions I just have Mr. questions. Um, Attorney Hicken, have you had a chance to look at over the documents yet? No. Okay. Just, that was a condition we had at the uh, revolving uh, fund committee. That yeah. So this will and it is approve it, but we got to make well, sure we and have it is all the documents. listed in here as subject to approval by the county. Right. And so I so just was wondering. So it'll that. go through the process. Yeah. So typically, the vote of the board comes first, and then I draft okay. the documents. Yeah, so we're looking for your, um, <coughs> you to delegate authority to um, Brady Powers to sign okay. them with attorney approval, but I'm the one who actually drafts the documents, so. And I know it was brought up about the timeline of getting this done, so I just, oh. no. <laughs> yeah, for the, it's for the grant purpose. So they're, they're not ready to, to rebuild right now. They need right. to get both right. grant approvals, et cetera, but in order to, make the application they have to secure the funds so this is this is their way to secure the final matching funds so that the application can go through so. um, the Mills. other thing I want to bring up is so that what was talked about the Parks and Trail was even just that discretionary funding right and that was kind of the initial um, assumption or request maybe it wasn't a request that's too strong a word but thought process and then we were talking about other opportunities and other options and um, and so it's just uh, um, a, c a good example of why we need that process right that mm -hmm. we, we approved earlier um, just to be able to gather information and make consistent decisions so but this is sidestepping yeah. a little bit I guess <laughs> but in a good way I think yeah. I, I think it's a great a great way to, to move forward so so I understand Lake County had a couple of bridges also and they they secured FEMA funding mm. there was some technicality regarding mm. this the location of the bridge that it was mm -hmm. all partly on federal land and they couldn't uh, they wouldn't consider that mm -hmm. so yeah that now was it's all yeah it's going to be located completely on state land I think is the uh, goal now probably not for that reason just so you don't have to deal with two agencies yeah. next time but it would help for that too. Other questions? Not, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Commissioner Hawkins. Is there support? 
support. <coughs> Thank you, Commissioner White. We have a motion and support. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Administrator Yorkie. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. So a few things today. I um, just wanted to update you on our efforts to uh, develop a strategic plan for the organization. Where we are right now is the steering committee has put together ideas around mission and vision. Um, and it's also done an analysis of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and what we're doing is we're having meetings with all the departments to kind of share the work done to date and to get feedback from staff to see if the steering committee is on the right path. Um, it's also an opportunity to uh, inform our employees about what strategic planning is for those who have not been through it before and also <coughs> to uh, communicate the relevance to everybody in the organization because I think there's a perception that um, this is something for leadership to do and it doesn't really pertain to, to anybody else in the organization and that's simply not true. Um, strategic planning um, impacts the whole organization and the more that we do to get input from our employees about what, you know, where we are currently and where we need to go, the stronger that plan is going to be. And so we've started having meeting, meetings with departments. We've had really great discussions so far with the departments that we've met with. Um, we have additional meetings scheduled, and so we're getting feedback on the SWOT analysis, again, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, um, and also on the vision and mission of the organization. Um, I will say that the uh, discussions with, with staff so far have really produced some interesting observations um, some things that uh, that we missed as a steering committee one thing for example is about mission creep or scope creep so in other words um, over time you know various departments are asked to take on new responsibilities and we have a culture uh, in this organization I think in this community of trying to be collaborative and to, to help our neighbors and what that sometimes produces is that we have more work to do than we actually have resources. And so figuring out how do we match uh, scope of work to resources is I think something that we need to take a look at. Um, one thing, another thing I'll say about those staff meetings is that we've had really, really good participation um, across. When, once people get what strategic planning is and why it's directly relevant, start over, relevant to the work that they do, um, they really start to buy in and we have really good discussion. So really pleased with how that's going and I want to thank again the members of the steering committee for recommending that we take more time at the front end of this process to involve staff. Um, the initial plan was to engage staff throughout the process but it was a much more accelerated timeline and I think building this foundation and talking about uh, what strategic planning is and the benefits of it to the organization and to all staff uh, has been time really well spent. So really pleased with how that's going. Um, next steps are to begin defining objectives and we've just scratched the surface on that discussion with the steering committee. Uh, we do want to finish up the, the departmental meetings around the, the first components of the uh, plan. Um, the conversation about the board's role in uh, approving the, uh, the forms for the discretionary funding uh, I think relates to uh, the process I had in mind for doing the strategic plan where I was planning to come back to, to this board <coughs> and ask for approval at several different stages of the process in terms of like you know, saying here's what staff agreed to in terms of a, a mission and vision. Um, I'm thinking we'll probably just do that as an information item along the way and then present the final plan for, for the board's approval when we, when we get to the end. So, yeah, okay. and I, I'm seeing Great that that's... Yes. All right. All right. Good Perfect. deal. Okay. But, but also, I mean, having, having these conversations in public and making sure that residents know where we are in that process, I think it's really important because um, we need to know where we're going as an organization and we need to have um, we need to have goals 
And the, the more thoughtful we are about that, the more effective we are in serving the public. So really appreciate the opportunity to work with staff on this, and I'm just really pretty energized by, by the conversations we're having, so. And strategic planning, and now all the eyes are glazed over in the community. No, they're um, not. People love it. Oh, no, no, trust me. It's too many syllables. Um, one thing in having these meetings with the department with the employees is I don't believe and I think this is what the meetings do is to get employees to understand that they are part of a their performance what who they are how they interact they are part of a huge of a bigger community within the organization of government but they they have a role to play that is as, as important as oh the exalted commissioners or the attorney or the administrator <laughs> but their role is probably far more important and they're on the front line of meeting with the community and it's the commu and they are the ones by which the community judges county government would that that were true I mean, it is part of that, for sure. That's very true, because, <laughs> because I do know that, that there are, things are not all good all the time, and so the public needs to, it's transparency mm -hmm. again. It's back to transparency. Yep. And the more that that can be um, promoted and um, practiced, the better it will be. And that means that information coming from the public is encouraged all the time. Well, not after 7.30, I'll be asleep. But um, we need input from the public. I mean, if something's not going quite the way it should be, and the public needs to understand that nothing is perfect, um, we just need to be aware, not we necessarily, but you, you're at the top there, to share it with department heads if there's something that, that didn't quite go the way one would have mm -hmm. expected. Yeah. So. But if who have which departments have you met with? I know the highway department, and that was pretty energizing. Um, we've met with auditor, um, assessor, land services, management information systems. That is IT, and also administration staff. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So um, more to come on that. Um, Regarding the capital improvement plan, um, we are working with a consultant to draft a preliminary plan for public review and comment. Um, we expect to have that done by May 15th, and we'll have that out for several weeks for people to review and provide feedback on. Um, the goal is to have uh, comments back by the middle of early to mid-July, or June rather, and then to have the board vote on the plan at the second meeting in, in June. I think that's the 25th or 27th. Anyway, so that's, that's the timeline for, for that. And I've gotten some emails from folks already asking for information. We have shared information with community members um, with the caveat that it is draft information and that the, um, the data that we're putting into the draft report that we'll issue on May 15th will be um, quality assured and, and ready for public consumption, so. And, and a recommendation or it's like, because you shared some, I requested some mm -hmm. information about there's estimates on uh, building upgrades. Mm -hmm. And it's written in about two point. You know, that's the size. Mm -hmm. it's, it's way too small. So mm -hmm. when the consultants produce, 10 points good, 12 points great. I know it takes more paper, but then we're supporting the paper industry, which mm -hmm. is fueled by working people. So I just really would like it that w documents that they produced, like the last go round uh, for the session two, was very readable. Mm -hmm. And I would like that information. And what you shared with me was about the breakdowns of how did you get, uh, or how did they come up with this much money being needed and mm -hmm. broken down by components. Right. And that's really good information if you can read it. Right. But your, your observation is 
well founded I mean it's, because it's, it's a paper copy it's paper copy and otherwise if you do it on the computer you're going to need a screen like this so you're right. not continually having to move and I understand that's their software format but right. it's I'll, I'll see about if we can get something that's more legible that the issue there is when you've got a large table and you put it across mm -hmm, several pages, mm -hmm. then you start losing the sense of what everything refers to. But I, I get your point. It, it should be <coughs> legible. Yeah. So, so that's, that's in process. Um, the chair mentioned the uh, budget calendar. We have gotten uh, budget sheets out to the departments, uh, thanks to Brady and Kelly Berg. Um, so we're in that information gathering uh, stage right now. I um, also wanted to mention that we are following up. I know there's a lot of interest in the uh, resolution of the uh, payment in lieu of taxes from the U.S. Forest Service or PILT uh, under the Thai Blatn Blatnik Act. <coughs> um, just as a reminder to, to viewers, um, back in 2018, the Forest Service conducted a an appraisal of the boundary waters, which is the basis of payments that we get from the federal government uh, to compensate us for our inability to, to assess property taxes on those areas. And that, that appraisal was well below the value that we felt um, that land actually has. And so there was a reappraisal done uh, that was released last year. Uh, we again disagreed with the, uh, with the valuation of those lands and so um, we have appealed to the uh, Department of Agriculture the Secretary of Agriculture Agriculture has the um, final say in the uh, in the appraisal um, and so he can either uh, say yes I agree with this value or no I don't agree with this value and select some other value <coughs> we believe that the value of the uh, boundary waters canoe area wilderness is well above uh, what was indicated in the, the appraisal. And so we are um, in the process of working on a letter with the other two counties, Lake and St. Louis counties, um, to, to um, express our concerns again and to uh, argue for a higher valuation so that, um, so that our payments in lieu of taxes do not go down. Um, the and, and so the, the appraisal is done every 10 years. The last appraisal um, was again in 2018. Prior to that, in 2008, we got a, an appraisal that resulted in our <coughs> payments being north of $2 million a year. Um, and so the, the most recent appraisal would have those payments going down by about $700,000 a year, which is a huge hit. Um, and so we are lobbying to, uh, to try to preserve at least the 2008 level of funding that, that we had been getting. Um, since we were notified of the change in payment, um, we have been setting aside the uh, 700,000 a year or so um, that the decrease uh, represents, or that, that represents that decrease. Um, but we, we are still hopeful that ultimately um, there will be uh, that there will be a decision by the USDA to to preserve at least the the original level of funding that we had in 2008. Um, there are also legislative uh, solutions that we're pursuing, um, and really trying to trying to make sure that that bases are covered. So, uh, work going on, and uh, more information to share. I hope in the not too distant future. <coughs> And those are my updates for today. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioner updates. Commissioner Hawkins. Um, yeah, so I attended ARC meeting on Friday in Duluth. Um, we had the chair of Grand Portage, and we had the chair and other members from Fond du Lac Reservation mm -hmm. talk about coordinating probation services with cultural sensitivity and how our probation services are working primarily in Carleton County I think is where they're focusing right now but hopefully um, we will talk about the those kind of services in all of our counties we're working on it they're working on a um, 
system, I can't think of the word right now, but like a scoring matrix <laughs> for how we're providing services in each of our counties. But we also had an update from um, the director concerning the legislation and the funding of seat community corrections organizations like we are part of. And we had been led to believe that um, Commissioner Schnell was going to support changing the funding formula. Well, it turns out that maybe that is not so true. It will have a significant effect on the finances of probation support for our counties. And so heads up, our costs will, might be going up. So there's an area. There is an area here we just heard from fuel costs. So I would caution when we're talking budgets, what are our priorities? What is the number one thing we need to spend our money on? Um, just, I would say probation services in our county is kind of important. So, um, just put a plug in there for that. <coughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I didn't, wasn't able to check. It was coming up for a vote soon. I'm, I am so disillusioned by what's happening in St. Paul. We have a budget surplus and I just think I'm not totally impressed with the way things are going down there, even though <laughs> they, yeah, passing some things really well, and, but they're not really totally thinking about the impact to rural counties like ours. So you want to call our representative? Go ahead, but no, he doesn't have a whole lot. Of, that was even said down there. Well, new, new, commit, or new senator doesn't have a lot of influence. Um, Department of Corrections has a lot more. So that's all I have to report. All right. Well, thank you for that. <coughs> Commissioner White. And I actually have not much of anything to report since I really was going to report on objective training for the strategic planning, but instead we got 12 inches of heart attack snow in Hovland <laughs> that day. And I, uh, well, it wasn't just the dog. It was also uh, ice under the snow. So I didn't get home in time to make it to the strategic planning, which I'm sure was very productive because they are. It, it was. And that woman over there said she would take notes. <laughs> and, and, and she did. We have good notes from that, and we also have homework before the next meeting. Oh, so I'll, I'll touch base with you on that. <laughs> yes, and I, if you have time after this meeting, on yep. time. For sure. Commissioner Mills. Um, going so top of mind conversations <laughs> um, would be Tack Harbor. Uh, potential um, North Shore waste goings-ons and our county-wide waste management plan. I'm trying to rope the city into that discussion as well and Mayor Benson has committed to attend our, our county meeting next Monday. Um, so that's awesome and uh, oh shoot there was another handful of things too. Uh, those, are, those are probably the two biggest I think. Um, but yeah. Plenty more. Um, as far as Tack Harbor is concerned, very, very, very preliminary. It doesn't sound like there's a whole, uh, there's not a whole lot of pressure, certainly not on our end, to figure out if, if there's something we want to do and, and what that something may be. Um, but I, I do see a whole lot of potential and there's a whole lot of resources out there to do it too. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Um, and really want to applaud Commissioner Storley for, for her work on that for, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but it's nothing new, so it's just new to me. <laughs> uh, and then, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. All right. Unless there's questions about anything. I'm happy to talk. Thank you. Well, I attended um, last week the Cook County Historical Society. Um, by monthly meeting and um, they have made a decision not to hire an executive director as a cost savings measure. They will be looking at hiring an administrative assistant for 10 hours a week. Um, so that was the important takeaway from, from that meeting. Um, Airport Commission last Thursday, you saw a couple of people here for public comment. Um, 
Pete Mott came and talked about the possibility of um, bringing disc golf to the southern side of the golf course, or the, the golf course, um, the airport, and to have that disc golf range down near the seaplane base. So that was um, a discussion we're going to be meeting next week and talking more about that. And uh, we also went through a new lease agreement that will be um, something extra that we'll put on Attorney Hicken's plate to review, but um, the lease agreements for, for the hangars had not been updated in some time. So Tyler Howell collected information on the cost per square foot and kinds of uh, <coughs> facilities throughout um, Minnesota that for comparable airports and gathered that information. So those are dollar numbers we can negotiate and understand that we're in the ballpark with other places. And Mindy Fredrickson did a great job of working up that initial contract that then County Attorney Hicken will be reviewing. So we appreciate their work on that. And then last day, uh, last thing, Earth Day on Saturday was just wonderful. Lots of um, different groups from the county, SHIP and SNAP and Soil and Water was there. And it was just a great community event, um, good attendance, and uh, really nice to see so many of our community members there. And Commissioner Storley. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Earth Day, congratulations to everybody that put that together at the community center. And one of the interesting things I enjoyed seeing was the actual uh, diagram of the North Shore Waste yeah. facility. Mm -hmm. It is awesome. Mm -hmm. So it's <clears throat> really nice to see that that fellow is coming to, um, to work back in the county again. <clears throat> and yesterday, um, Administrator Yorkey and Administrator and um, Commissioner <laughs> Assessor, it's getting late. Mm -hmm. Assessor Bob <laughs> physically attended the meeting, and then I attended, and then also did uh, Commissioner Mills. Um, <clears throat> I did request that um, we get an idea about the PILT payments. So I have a copy here, but Administrator Yorkey, if you would like for me to forward that to you, and we could have it just for information in our next um, agenda. Okay. It's very interesting to see what everybody is, you know lacking or getting or whatever. Um, so last week I um, always attend the Arrowhead County Association and John Ongaro, he's our representative at the legislature. And so um, he always gives us an updating. Just briefly, um, looks like the child care tax credit is gonna go through at $1,100 for a year. That's the stipulation right now for the year. Um, it'll help low and moderate income people. It's not going to go very far when you figure take 12 months divided by $1,100, but <laughs> it'll help a little bit. Um, it looks like um, there'll be um, <clears throat> maybe some refunding of the fiscal disparity, um, but right now um, it's not in the House bill, so we probably aren't going to go anywhere with that. Also with the homestead uh, tax exclusion, it's at 6% right now. It could go up to 7% for one year only to help those folks out. Um, Department of Health and Human Services are looking at separating children and families from the regular bigger department for individuals. So they're working on that. And as I briefly said before, no money for armor radios. And um, Social Security uh, <clears throat> tax could be um, voted on in favor of eliminating it for those of us who are older. All right, well, lots of good information. Um, we have our correspondence that's listed there, the February lodging tax comparison. And is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. That was second. rather quick. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are concluded for today. Thank you. This is for um, how you live in the <coughs> <coughs>